What's up everybody? Today we've got a really good video which is crafting your cold message, uh, a guide to creating a cold message that converts. So this is version number two of this video. I've made a lot of updates so if you've watched my previous video on how to create a cold message this has a lot more to it so please uh, stay until the end. There's so much to this um, and in today's video I've got some guides. I'm going to teach you everything that I know. So I try to I have like 96 slides so this video might be long but um, everything that I know and I'm gonna give you some scripts that you can use, uh, some frameworks that you can use just so that you can easily, so by the end of this video, you'll be able to instantly create an amazing offer with whatever you're trying to pitch. So uh, let's just get into it. So anyways, the mindset of crafting a cold message. So let me just move my big head here. Um, first thing is we wanna be human, so we don't want to sound like an ad. Uh, just think, how would I talk to a friend? So what would we say to our friends is what we should say in the messages that we're using. So we wanna use slang, we want to use grammar errors. We want to tell jokes. Um, this just makes us stand out from the crowd. So here's why. Because a lot of people do this where they, they make their uh, emails or their their uh, text messages or whatever they're using, their Facebook messages, they just make it look perfect. right? And so this looks perfect. And so um, when we get emails like this, we instantly filter them out because we've programmed ourselves to uh, filter out the noise. And so we always see um, emails that look like this. So anytime we see a newsletter, and we have these like just these key things that we see, which is like a photo. Everything looks pretty. The uh, here up at the top, we have everything is capitalized correctly, and there's buttons. And so we, when I see a thing like this, I'm like, oh, well, I'm not really interested in this. I don't really care. It's a newsletter, and I get hundreds of these a week or a month, you know. So we easily filter them out. So this noise is a constant bombardment of advertising and stimulus. And so think of a radio right and we have a radio you have the the noise so that like the <laughs> that you constantly hear when you're listening to the radio and uh, we want to find the signal right so we want to find these voices or like the people singing and so let's just say you're trying to tune a radio you hear the static and then you hear voices or a song and then you stop to listen because it's different from the static that you're normally hearing and so uh it catches your attention when you when you hear something different. So the average across the entire spectrum of, when, of the radio, right, it's mostly noise, right, mostly static. And then when you hear something or when you hear um, a signal, right, you get intrigued. So our job throughout this entire process is to step, separate ourselves from the noise so that we stand out from the competition. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. And the way to do that is just to, number one is be to, to look human um, because when another human reaches out to a human, you feel much more inclined to respond to them based on reciprocity. So we want to um, we want to, someone to feel like they have to respond to us because they want they don't want to leave us hanging, right? Um, so when your mom calls you, you feel obligated to pick up the phone, right? But when it's a scam likely, you don't feel any obligation. You, you don't feel anything, so you just you know, hang up. Uh, and so it's the same with advertising. As Gary Halbert says, people sort their mail over a trash can. So this was back in like the 1980s, 1990s. Uh, and you, you know, you would get all this mail, right? And everybody, when you, in the advertising, when, in direct mail advertising, I'm sure you probably get mail and you get all these, I'll get like, Chase wants to increase your credit limit or Arby's new, whatever, you know, just random ads. And they instantly just go in the trash for me. And so you have your stack of mail that you get every day and you have a lot of them that go in the trash because they just look like advertisements or those magazines that are just a whole bunch of coupons go straight to the trash. And so, uh, Everyone sorts their mail over trash cans, so the best way to get someone's attention is to not look like the trash, which the trash is just other advertisements. So the way to look like not the trash is to look like a real human. So if you hand wrote a letter, that doesn't look like you know trash, right? Um, so if you get something that looks like an ad, it goes straight to the trash. But if you get something that's handwritten, then you feel obligated to open it. So this applies to uh, not only mails, but also phone calls not just mails and phone calls, but applies to all forms of communication that we do. So instead of this, which looks like every other email that floods your inbox, you want to do something like this. Send something uh, that has grammar errors, humors, and just try to be as human as possible. So also you can add scarcity. I've added scarcity here by just saying, R-E, did you see this, John? As if I already sent an email earlier. Um, and this is a follow-up email, but you have just this weird emoji that not, you know, you don't really see that. Now, a lot of companies are using emojis now just to look cool and fancy. So um, when you see the mainstream doing it or when you see other companies doing it, you know you probably should stop doing that thing because the mainstream is doing it. And so if the mainstream is doing it and they're putting like smiley faces inside their email subject headlines, then you're like, all right, well, if they're doing that, that means 
it's people are going to start filtering that out. So people are going to start seeing emojis in the subject and light, and they're going to instantly be like, all right, well, that's noise. That's just static, and I don't want it. I want to find the signal. Um, and if normal people don't put emojis in the headline and only companies do that, then we don't want to put emojis in our headline, right? Um, or our subject headline. But, you know, this is a little different. And uh, we're using a little humor here and we try to be as human as possible. Um, also by lowercasing this uh, and then having you spelled as just you rather than Y-O-U, stuff like that. What, another step further that I could have gone was just lowercasing John rather than doing the capital J. So uh, just some things you can think of, right? Also, Automation works, but being robotic doesn't. So we want to use automations to our advantage. Um, so we know we don't want to look perfect and we want to look human by using these grammar errors or slang or humor and all that stuff. Um, and so we want to look normal, right? But we still need automations throughout our process. So our goal is to look human by using robots. So use robots to look human. And uh, we do this by adding mistakes, adding variables like first names and talking to people as if we would a friend. And so you want to send an email that sounds like it's directed to that person or a message, right? Or a Facebook message, whatever, something that sounds like it's only for this person, but we want to use automation so that we can send it to multiple people um, and they feel like it's for them. So if I said, uh, hey, Carol, uh, is your mom, is your mom Marion, right? And you'd be like, oh, I mean, my mom is Marion, right? That, and that, that might be hard data to get, right? You might not be able to get that data. But if you were able to send everyone a message saying their first name and their mom's first name, you'd be like, oh, I mean, yeah, my mom is Carol or my mom is Marion, right? So uh, we want to use these automations to our advantage, but we also want to try to make them as personalized as possible, as uh, unique as possible to that person so that they feel obligated to respond. And so something that they did in... Um, the direct mail days, right? Or even now they have like, there's machines that will handwrite your letter or they'll handwrite the, uh, what's it called? The envelope for you so that it looks like it's a real person, you know, but it's actually just a robot you doing it. So it takes less time. Um, all right, let's lay out how your cold outreach should look. So here's how it works. We have intro, offer, call to action. All right, uh, and sometimes we add hooks at the end. Um, so. Let's see this in action. Let's just do, yeah, here's one. All right, I've been trying to find your profile forever, LOL, just thought I'd ask you something. Uh, if I said I can get you featured on Entrepreneur Magazine, would you be interested? So in the blue, we have the intro. I've been trying to find your profile forever, just thought I'd uh, ask you something. And then we have the offer. I can get you an Entrepreneur Magazine. Then the call to action, would you be interested? Cool. Shameless way to start a convo, LOL, but I can fill up your yoga studio to max capacity in 30 days. Open a chat. You don't have to pay me anything up front, LOL. So this is kind of the same. Blue is our intro. Our offer is in red. Open a chat. Uh, our call to action. And then this time we have a hook, which is something at the end of the message. Hooks can be at the end of the message or just a follow-up, right? Just saying, hey, you don't have to pay me anything up front. Uh, just to try to entice them to respond. So, guys, I'm, 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 really, I'm really excited to get into this because <laughs> this is like, this is going to be so good. Uh, you're going to learn a lot from this. Hopefully, um, you will. All right. <laughs> intros. Um, you're going to, your intro is just an icebreaker, icebreaker, right? So it's just a subject headline. It's just, uh, gets people curious, confused or laughing, you know? So everything about your offer or your outreach should be unique. And so, uh, the best way to get someone's attention is to create something unique. Uh, and so we want to use our intro as a unique subject headline or a unique first line in our message just so that they're like, oh, that's, that's kind of funny or that's weird or that's, um, that makes me curious, you know? So intro examples, here we go. Here comes the rain. We're gonna go um, into, I have an offer for swipe file. So I wanna thank my team, Shacker and Shaksham for helping me out create this uh, because they helped me uh, put a lot of these together. So we just sat for hours this weekend just trying to come up with a whole bunch of different offers, um, a whole bunch of different hooks. There's so much stuff in here that you guys can use, uh, but we're going to start with the offers. I'm sorry, intros. And so you can pick and choose whatever you want out of here, or you can create your own. I really just gave you this as a guide and a framework that you can use to try something. So RE, did you see this, right? So you can use it as a subject headline. Um, and so some of these only apply for certain things. Some of these apply for uh, Facebook or LinkedIn or um, social channels or just email or just text, right? So or e did you see this would only really apply for email, but um, a lot of these apply for almost anything. So I uh, tried to send you this last week, right? Oh, that's like, and so you see that and you're like, oh, I feel obligated to respond now, right? Because someone tried to send me this like last week and I, I have to um, 
see what this person is trying to say. Uh, and then there's some of these that are a lot pretty funny. So I'm with the FBI and I have a few questions. Uh, my offer is good. Just hear me out. I think I accidentally. Oh, there we go. All right. If uh, let's just do there we go. Uh, let's see. Once upon a time, you responded to my DM testing one two three. I need to tell you something about your wife. I'm about to pitch you the most unique offer. Gracias amigo. This I think says hello friend in um, in Japanese. I believe <laughs> I just I just did a converter right. So just like that that's interesting right. That's really unique right. If you set if you saw just like if someone sent you a message request on Facebook and it was just like Japanese, you're like what in the world is this? And so you click onto it. Um, uh, knock knock who's there. This might sound stupid. Uh, shameless way to start a convo, which is what we just used. Um, I don't slide into the DMs as often, but uh, urgent. Don't respond to this email. <laughs> that's just something that's funny. Roses are red, violets are blue. This is amazing. I have an amazing offer that might work for you. Can I tell you a secret? Right. And so some of these things are like, oh, interesting. Curiosity is one of the big uh, triggers here, and I'll get into that in a little bit. So those are some offers, or I'm sorry, some intros. I keep saying offers. Sorry. You can use these swipes that I made for you, but the best thing is to come up with your own because it makes it more unique if you come up your, with your own because the more people that watch this video, the more people are going to use the scripts, the less effective they become. So if you choose your own style, uh, I would choose your own style if I were you, and I made these scripts to give you ideas. Now, you can just blatantly use the scripts, right, because I gave them, you know, they're for you. Um, but again, the best way, the best thing to do is do your own thing uh, because me and my team, we came up with these over the weekend where we just sat for hours and just came up with our own. And so um, this is just a result of some things that we've used in the past, some things we haven't, some things that we thought, okay, well, these uh, would just make people really curious and let's just try that. And so we created this out for you, but then again, we're just three dudes um, trying to come up with these different intros. And so you can do the same thing by coming up with your own and it would be more unique if you did it because you know your audience a little better. You might know their language or their style and all that stuff. And so something might resonate better uh, with them based on what you say rather than just something that you pulled off of a swipe file that I gave to you. And so uh, use them to your advantage. I would use them 100%. If you don't know what you're doing, just you can use those and I made them for you. Uh, but the best thing that you could do is create your own. So anyways, offer, we're gonna get into this. This is the biggest portion of this uh, video, which is um, the offer, right? Realistically, we want our offer to be short and easy to grasp. So easy to understand. Like we know exactly what the end result is when we hear the offer. So some examples are two day free shipping, one click purchasing, four hour work week, work week delivered in 30 minutes or less. These are some amazing offers that have uh, st stood the test of time over the couple, I mean, over the last couple de decades, uh, 30 day, I mean, delivered in 30 minutes or it's free was Domino's uh, tagline that got them to where they are. And it's uh, eventually they had, they got sued because someone died <laughs> delivering a pizza <laughs> so fast. That's, that's not, that's not very funny. That's sad. Sorry. Um, but for our work week, like the, I, I understand what this is. I know what the end result is and it's really curious, really interesting. And it, it makes me feel like I, like it's almost a no brainer, you know? So, um, people have pretty short attention spans. So we want our message to be short and to the point so that, uh, so the offer should display the value in as few words as possible. Right? So four hour work week, one click purchasing, two day free shipping. Yeah. Speak their language. The more specific you can make the offer, the better. And so you, we want to speak directly to them because they're going to reply better for that. So that offer swipe file, we went through two, uh, I think I'll get into that in a minute, actually. Um, uh, we went through thousands yeah, we of offers and a lot of them just said, blah, blah, blah. I help businesses grow. I help businesses uh, create a system to consistently get clients, right? And you know, that might sound interesting to you. And when you're starting out, especially when you're starting out, you want to be Un, like not very specific. You want to be a generalist. Like you want to help everybody. You think like, and I thought this way too, where everyone was like, you want to be specific. You want to have a niche and everything. But to me, I was like, well, what if I can help out everybody? Right? <laughs> like I, I want to, I don't want to, um, but that's a scarcity mindset. So you don't want to be scarce. Like in, in your audience, there's probably plenty to go around. There's plenty of clients in your audience. Probably. Right. I don't know who your audience is, but I'm guessing there's plenty. All right. If you're talking to real estate or insurance or I don't know, like a crypto gaming, things, right? There's probably thousands already in that audience and you only have a couple customers, right? So there's thousands more to go. So you want to make your offer specific to that person. Don't do, I help businesses, blah, 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 because you're going to be ununique and everybody else is doing it. And the whole goal with this is to be as unique as possible. So, um, 
no one's going to respond to that. You must be specific uh, with the outreach that you're doing. So out of the 200 offers that we reviewed, only 180 of them were actually kind of specific. Oh, kind of, right? So some of them weren't even that good, but they were specific enough that we grabbed them. Um, and so we just sat for hours just going through these offers trying to figure out who's got a decent offer. Um, and this is good news for you because no one else is doing this work. And so if you just applied this strategy, and again, by the end of this video, you'll be able to snap your fingers and create an amazing offer. Um, but no one, else is, no one else is doing this, which is great because... You, you can apply it and you can get so much farther ahead than them. All right, so again, speak their language. We don't, we, we want, we don't want to be specific by just calling out their audience uh, in our offer like this. So we don't want to just say something like, I help pest control companies get more leads. All right, we don't want to just say that because it's calling out to the avatar, the audience, which we'll get into in a minute, but um, it's just saying, well, we'll help you get more leads. And so that's a little better than I help businesses do blah, blah, blah. But it's still not very good because it's just saying get more leads, which is very ununique. It's not speaking their language at all. And so to be more specific, speak their language. So you would say, I help pest control companies get 10 bed bug heat treatments without Facebook ads or home advisor. Right. So that's like, oh, OK, that's really interesting because um, I know the exact end result that I'm going to get out of this. I get 10 bed bug heat treatments, which is a lot different than just saying I help you get more leads. And so I'm more compelled. If I'm a pest control company, I'm like, oh, that's that that actually makes sense to me. Like, contextualizes in my head because leads can mean anything. Uh, so, and without Facebook ads or a home advisor, that also speaks to language because I've talked to a lot of pest control companies and a lot of them say, I don't want to do home advisor because it sucks or Facebook ads, I've tried it before and it sucked. And so uh, we want to kind of, uh, we'll get into how to kind of frame that offer in a minute. Here we go. All right, talk in terms of end results. We've kind of already talked about this, but no one cares about anything other than uh, what they're going to get out of your service. And so, you want to be specific. So let's just say you sacrificed hamsters to a sun god uh, to get 10 bed bulk heat treatments. The client doesn't really care how it gets done. They just want to know what's in it for them or what they get out of it. So we've all probably heard talk in terms of benefits and not in features. Uh, but for a long time, I didn't really know what that meant. So I'm just going to explain it to you real quick. A gym sells you a dream, an outcome, uh, what you're going to get out of it. So I'm going to get shredded and healthy and fit. And so that's the benefit they're getting. That's, that's the benefit, right? So there's benefits and features. The benefit is you're going to get shredded and fit and you feel healthy and you're going to look good and everyone's going to love you um, and all that stuff, right? That's the benefit. That's the end result you're going to get off. That's the payoff that you're going to get out of it. The features would be the equipment that they have. So we've got the Smith machine. We've got the, uh, the kettlebells. I don't know. Um, and or their gym hours or their different classes that they have and all that stuff. And so we don't really want to talk in terms of uh, you're going to get, I've got a system that has, I've got a gym that has a Smith machine and our hours are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and you know, all that's like, no one cares about that, right? They want to, what's the end result? What, what do I get out of it? You know, so always sell the end results. Never talk about what your service is, just what it does. All right, cool. Let's start crafting our offer. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right, everyone knows Alex Hermosi, $100 million offers. We probably all read the book, but uh, there are some things that I'm just going to reiterate some points because you probably forgot. Um, so here's some advice from everyone's favorite man. Make a Mac. So this is like the, as a magic. Yeah. So M A G I C. I don't know why I didn't capitalize I and C, but um, the magic offer, that's his way of doing it. Uh, this is his framework and uh, I, I believe in it, but there's also, I'm going to give you some better frameworks of like literally just, you can fill it in with your offer and you'll be able to, you know, create something really easily. But um, these are just some guidance points. So you don't have to have all these, but you just have to have, like the more, the not really the more the merrier, honestly, like the shorter they make it, the better. Um, but if you add a few of these, I think at least two, you'll have a pretty good offer in there. So make a magnetic reason why. This is, doesn't really apply to us, but um, with the cold outreach. But let's just say you're doing a Facebook ad and you're like, hey, we got this Black Friday sale. Uh, we're going to sell this for $999 rather than $12,000 that it usually is because of blah, 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 blah. And it's Black Friday, you know, whatever. And so that's the magnetic reason why it doesn't really apply to us. So we'll start with uh, announce the avatar, which is just saying, hey, I help pest control companies get this end result. I help basketball, basketball trainers get this end result. Um, and so we want to announce who they are. Give them a goal. So a specific number. I help basketball trainers get 10 new clients paying $1,000 per month per client so that they can scale their business and do what they love, which is playing basketball. I don't know. Um, so I'm announcing the avatar. I'm giving a specific number of what the end result is going to be. 10 bed book heat treatments, 20 roofing jobs, you know, so indicate an interval so a specific time frame people value shorter time frames so do anything to cut the time in half um so that they can get the end result quicker and try to do it under a month so what i'll usually say is hey i can, I can bring you 10 bedbug heat treatments this month if you're interested 
something like that, you know? So try to make it as short as possible. I can get you six pack abs in two days. Like, ooh, okay, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, and then we can complete with the t container word. So system, YouTube ads, voice notes. I can get you six pack abs in two days using this new jelly on your belly. <laughs> new jelly on your belly. Um, the jelly belly. Uh, okay, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. It is late, guys. 9.24 on a Sunday. Um, offer frameworks. Let's get into that. All right, so I gave you some... Actually, this is... Uh, so we have offer frameworks and swipe files. So this, I'm going to put this in the description as well. So this is what you're going to use to just craft your own offer. So you can use some of the things that he said in there, which is um, announcing the avatar and all that stuff uh, through these offers right here. So you can just you can grab it and pick and choose what you want to do and put your little things in there. So I help... Uh, Basketball trainers get desired result, which is, let's say, 10, 10 students, 10 full-time students at $1,000 a month without challenge or fear. So without having to use uh, Facebook outreach or without having to use Facebook ads or Google ads or anything like that. And so you want to you want to know what the audience wants, obviously. So you want to talk to your audience and know what they want because doing this without knowing that is kind of hard because I wouldn't know that because I, I used to do bed bug heat or I used to help pest control companies get 10 bed bug heat treatments without relying on uh, word of mouth. And the way that I came up with that offer, I just called a whole bunch of pest control companies and asked them what they wanted. They all said, uh, we hate home advisor. Um, we want more bed bug heat treatments because they, they pay the most money and they're the easiest to do. And, uh, that's basically, it. Yeah, we don't want to rely on word of mouth because, um, you know, we haven't have had a, we haven't found a consistent way of getting clients. And so that was their problems. And so that's how I came up with my offer. And so the challenge or fear is relying on word of mouth or using home advisor. Uh, and so I'm going to help you get your end result without that challenge or fear. So there's some examples in here. I got this from Mitch Wiggins. Shout out to Mitch Wiggins. Uh, he gave me a lot of these. I, I created some on my own as well, like this next one. Uh, but a lot of these are from him, so go check them out. All right. Uh, next thing, how to get desired result through system. Now, this is undervalued. I, I couldn't come up with a lot of examples, but there, not a lot of people are doing this. And I think it works. With, I do this sometimes. I'll do like, hey, I can, get, I can bring you 40 appointments this month through my one-click appointment system. You know, ooh, one click appointment system. I just got that from Jeff Bezos, one click purchasing. And uh, so I saw this on Twitter, how to print women's addresses through Tinder voice notes. And I was, that was very intriguing to me because I was like, I've never, one, I, I never really used Tinder, so I didn't, I didn't know the lingo of women's addresses. I'm like, hmm, I'm guessing he, this guy knows his audience and he knows that that's the end result that the guys want, right? How to print women's addresses because I'm guessing the address means you can go to their house and you can, you know, because I'm sure there's a lot of conversations that happen on Twitter, but they don't actually lead into anything. So we want to get to the end result, which the end result is the woman's address. So you can go on a date or whatever. So that was pretty interesting. T Tinder voice notes. That's the system that they're using. It's like, hmm, that's even more interesting because that's really unique because I've never heard anybody doing it through Tinder voice notes. You know, but what do I know? Um, how to get 10 roofing jobs through Amazon ads, right? And so that's that's really unique, right? Because how do you get roofing jobs through Amazon ads? Um, and I just created this one on the spot. Like I... You know, I just wanted to give an example where it's something if using this unique system that no one else is really using. And so it, it makes it sound a lot more compelling that way. Get 10 bed bug heat treatments through doctor notes. And you're like, what in the world? How would you do that? Right. And that's, again, this is just one I created on my own. Um, but I think this is undervalued. I think I, I would I would test a lot of these things. And I'm going to tell you later, you want to create a family of offers. But um, just try to create a whole bunch of different ones using all these different frameworks to try to see what works best for you. But try something with this one. I think no one is really using this one as much as they should. All right, how to get desired result in time. So I can bring you 10 bed bug heat treatments in 30 days. It's kind of the same one as this one, except we're just adding time to it. Uh, or I, what I recommend, honestly, is you do desired result in time without challenge or fear. I can help you get 10 bed bug heat treatments in 30 days without relying on word of mouth. So cool. And so you can mix and match these and put them together. This one, it doesn't really apply to... Um, for B2B, but it can be used for B2C. It can apply to B2B, uh, but I help you get desired results so you can, you know, whatever. So I help you lose. So I have a, a client and hers is like, I help women uh, get fit so that they can look good naked. I'm like, oh, that's actually uh, really good and it relates to them. Um, and these are just a lot of, I don't know why there's so many uh, <laughs> weight loss examples. How to get high paying clients so you can buy the car of your dreams. How to get high paying clients so you can become a millionaire. Um, so you can buy a private jet. Just, I don't know. So if you know your audience, you know a selfish desire that they have, or they're like, they just want this thing. Some of my clients I'll do, uh, I help blah, blah, blah. I help construction companies um, work less hours so they can spend more time with their family. So that's their, that's this, 
the selfish desire that they want, which is I want to be able to spend more time with her, my family. Um, and so you want to kind of play into that or you can play into that. Or, or this one system will give you desired result. This one system uh, will make you desired result in time. Uh, this one says, and see, so it's kind of the same as this, right? Or system, right? Um, but just backwards without challenge or fear. I have a one click appointment system that can bring you 40 appointments a month without uh, relying on cold outreach, right? So that's this one system, blah, 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 right? Cool. How to instantly get desired results. So that's the time instantly. Um, yeah, whatever. So those are a lot of different options that you can use. You can choose these, you can use these to create your own offers. I would create a whole bunch of different ones if I were you. Uh, just to kind of mix and match. So there's your offer framework. All right. Um, also when creating your offer, one other thing I'm going to show you is I have offer swipe files. So there's intro swipe files and offer swipe files. If you don't know what to offer, let's just say you're just starting out and you have no clue what you want to do. This is actually a really good way of uh, just finding out maybe what you want to do. Because I, so what I did is I'm a member of this school group, school, S-K-O-L, oops. And um, what I did is we scraped the entire school group of, it was like 8,000 members. A lot of them have, hey, I help people, this audience do this by this, right? Um, I help courts, blah, 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 you know? And so I scraped all these and we, we went through each and every one of them to see which ones had good offers. Each, each and every one of them that said, I help or I teach. And so we went through all those and came up with the best offers that we found. Uh, some of them aren't that great. Some of them don't follow this framework, but... A lot of them are just interesting enough that it caught our attention, so we put them in here. And so we help. I help basketball players increase their shooting percentage by 60% in 30 days without paying trainers uh, as shooting machines or spending 90 hours in the gym. That's actually a really good offer, right, if I was a basketball player. I help guitarists become confident players by making jazz guitar a walk in the park. That's actually really cool. Um, so these are just really interesting offers. Like I would read through all these because maybe if you're just starting out and you don't know – what really helped me starting out was just seeing what other people were doing. Not because I wanted to steal their offer, was, but it was like I could understand a little more um, how I could do it or how I could go about things. And so if you say you're passionate about basketball and you like helping basketball kids, that's something that you can just use that offer or help kids get that end result you know, without this pain. So that was really good, actually. So I help people get – help basketball players get this end result, 60% really good, uh, without this pain. You know, Anyways, I help financial conscious people to secure their retirement future by sourcing – uh, protected performance contracts. I don't know what that is. Um, so that's one. That one's okay. I help plumbers, HVC, electricians uh, to attract 100, 200 prospects um, for their high value service per month on average. That one's like okay because one we're targeting like three or four different people, and so you're like mm, I don't know if you know I don't know if it really speaks directly to me. And then on top of that, high value prospects. I would say I help plumbers get more. Uh, hot water heater repairs, right? That would be a lot more specific. Um, I help wedding filmmakers flood their calendars with high ticket bookings or high ticket weddings. That's an amazing offer. So you can go through this and just kind of see all these different offers and see what you, you want to do um, if you're just starting out. Or you can just get a lot of ideas of how some of the container words that people are using, like what, what kind of system they're saying, like Tinder voice notes, you know, it's just really interesting. Or uh, maybe how they're framing it, like the help you increase your uh, percentages on shooting. Like that's a really interesting so, uh, and then also I have, this is the entire school that I scraped. And so I'm just going to call this offers. Um, and so these are the 8,000 people that were in that school group and their names and like all that stuff. And so if you want, you can go through here and there's some of them that we, you can click here and look up. Um, I help. Now you might have to create your own version of this because I don't think you'll be able to do it if you, um, on my sheet. So you have to create your own copy, but, um, we can click clear here to so clear all these and just look up I help. If it'll come up, there we go. And just click select all and then OK. And then it's going to show you all the ones that say I help, which is 1400. Right. And then, we, and then you can do another one where it just says I teach. Right. Um, clear or I teach. Right. And then we can select all those. And we can also do how to. So I teach blank how to. And so um, we can look at all these just to see what other other people saying. And so we went through a lot of these. Some of them uh, we didn't go through. So there's 8,000 total. We went through like 2,000 of them. All of them that say I teach and I help. So there might be some other container words or like words that how to get or just the word get. So you can look at all the ones that say the word get. Um, I teach people how to become coaches through my live NLP certification trainings. 
All right, so you can look through these if you want to and just get some more ideas, but these were the 180 best ones that we found. So I know I kind of went on a rant on there, so sorry about that. Here we go. When creating your offer, you want to think of um, this. You want to make it one of a kind so that no one competes with you, right? No one can compare to you because if you don't, you're just a commodity. Like you'll get a much higher reply rate if you create an offer that no one else has ever heard before. Um, it could be the same end result, but just a different system or less risk, which leads to my next point, which is uh, remove the risk as much as possible. If you were to remove the risk, it just makes it so much easier to say yes. Um, it makes it easier for the client to make a decision. Uh, you make it easy to, you can easily increase reply rate just by adding with, without any paid ads or you only pay per lead or close um, or, uh, or just adding to your offer a 31 delayed payment, 31 day delayed payment. So you don't have to pay me uh, for 31 days and you would only pay me if you think it was worth it. You know, something like that. Um, and, and so when you hear something like that, you're like, oh my gosh, that's actually really good. So, or you add a guarantee. It just makes it super easy to say yes, right, to that because now I know what the end result is and if I don't get it, then I, I, there's no risk to me, right? And you might be scared to write a really good offers, but I promise that you will stand out if you write these good offers because if you don't, you just become a commodity like everybody else. Um, a really good exercise is to think of if I had a, a magic wand and you could say the best offer in the world or you could deliver the best offer in the world to your audience, what would it be? Um, so that's, so if I said, all right, if I could give someone 120 appointments automatically boop, with a magic wand without spending any money and without um, doing any outreach or just no work at all, right? Just boom, 120 appointments. What, like, how would I frame that offer? You know, um, another thing to say is if you were a scammer, and the government wouldn't come after you, and there was no repercussions, what could you say or um, what, what would your offer be to where it sounds so good to be true? You know, so it's like, hey, I've, <laughs> I've got, um, I literally have 30 people that want to buy from you right now, like 30 people, and all you gotta do is you just have to take these calls. I mean, I, I just can't take them. Can you take them? You know, that's something that's like, oh, well, I mean, that's not, that's not really a... <laughs> I don't think the government would be against that, but how would we, if I were to scam, and obviously we're not scamming people, but sometimes I, I like to think of like, like a hacker a lot or like scammers a lot, because a lot of times they, they have to be on the cutting edge. They have to think about, um, what, what's the best way to get somebody's attention? How do I, how do I frame this thing so that it actually gets someone to click or actually gets someone to send me money? You know? So, um, even though it's unethical and all that stuff, but it just really helps you uh, understand like how, how do we, how do we get these people's attention? Because that's the whole thing about this is we're just trying to get people's attention. Um, one of the biggest triggers in copy is curiosity in teasers. So I've got a system that can that gives me 10 appointments per week for free, and it literally only takes me two minutes a week to do it. So um, that was just curiosity. So now I'm sure you're curious. We're like, how do you get 10 appointments a week only working two minutes a week doing it, and it's free? Um, and at the end of the video, I'll tell you how to do this. Uh, and now there's your teaser, right? <laughs> so this is just fake. I mean, I do have ways to do that, but um, that's just the curiosity, which is I've got a way to do this uh, really easily. And then the teaser is like, I got, I'll show you at the end of the video. Um, so these are really powerful triggers and makes people really curious, right? Because then, because curiosity makes you want to take action. You ever see a link that says, don't click this link, right? And you're like, mm -hmm, I, I feel like I have to click the link or don't look this up. Or on Twitter, it was like, don't look up um, the, I forget, the darkest place in the universe or the uh, the coldest place in the universe. And it was like, it looked like an Among Us character if you look it up on Google. That was something really stupid. But um, but it made me look it up, right? Because I was like, hmm, interesting. They say, don't look this up. Um, so, because it adds just curiosity. So, the best way to get someone to respond to your offer is by adding curiosity uh, so that they just feel like they have to respond. And so... I have a hack that can instantly just add curiosity to your offer. And that in itself is curiosity, right? <laughs> um, so this hack is just play opposite day. So the best way to get someone's attention is just by saying something abnormal. There's consensus and non-consensus. The consensus is something that's normal. This is what the way that things should be. Non-consensus is this is abnormal. This is not like this is just um, left field, right? This is not something that I thought of. Um, and so we just want to do the opposite of from what's normal. So I've got a system that can bring, that gives me 10 appointments per week for free. And it literally only takes me two minutes to do. 
the way that I made this offer at normal is saying it's free, right? Which the, the normal is appointments are hard to get and they cost a lot of money and it takes a lot of time. And so if I say it's free and it takes me two minutes, that instantly, right, we instantly separate ourselves from everybody else by using, by taking what the normal is and making it abnormal, right? So it's normal to get, to work hard and to, everybody says that, right? Everyone's like, you got to work hard and you got to try hard and you got to spend a lot of money to, you, in order to play the money game, you got to have money. But I said, look, you don't need money. You can do it for free. And it takes literally two minutes and you get this end result. They're like, well, how do you do that, right? You're instantly curious. And so um, consensus is getting appointments is hard, it takes time, expensive. So I flipped that on its head with this headline. And so um, make something hard into something easy. Make something expensive into something cheap. Make something that takes time into something that's instant. And so like if you said, I can get you a six pack abs in two seconds, right? You're like, oh, like out, right? Jelly belly. <laughs> um, and I gave some examples like YouTubers use this a lot. Uh, and I, all these examples are price related, which I didn't really realize that. But a $21,000 first class airline seat. This was uh, Casey Neistat's most popular video. This was a recent video that uh, Mr. Beast posted. One week versus, I mean, sorry, $1 versus $1 million hotel room, right? Whoa, because hotel rooms are usually $150 a night, $100 a night, whatever it is. So a dollar hotel room, that's like, that's non consensus. That's abnormal. A million dollar hotel room, that's abnormal. I sold my house for a dollar, that's abnormal. Not $12 you know, McDonald's burger. And so even then, it's not even that crazy, like $12 burger, which is um, the price of usually a regular burger at like B-dubs or Red Robins or something like that, but it's McDonald's, right? So the consensus is McDonald's burgers are a dollar or $2 and this is $12, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so an easy way to create an amazing offer is just flip something on its head, right? Flip, make it to where it's like, uh, I get this end result without this pain, right? And the pain is what everybody has to go through and I can make it easy or free or fast or, um, or expensive, or you know, just you know, hopefully, hopefully get the picture. All right. Um, call to actions and hooks. So these are uh, call to actions hooks are pretty easy. So there's not going to be a ton to this, but there's some uh, important things that a lot of people miss. And so on social channels, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, you want it to end with more subtlety. And on email, SMS, Google Calendar invites, you want to be more direct with your call to action. The reason is people on social channels are willing to hold a conversation more. They see your profile, they know what, who you are and what you do, and you can get your foot in the door with a small ask. And so I like to, I call it a small ask, which is just something that causes very little commitment. You wanna make it as easy as possible for them to say yes. And so sub call to actions for social channels is just framing the offer as if it's a question. So if I, if I said I can get you end result, would you be interested? If I could said I can get you um, a 60% you know, increase your shooting range or your shooting percentage by 6% in 30 days, would you be interested? Um, if I could, you know, or just adding, would you be interested to the end or if you're interested? So a lot of times I'll say, I, I can bring you 120 points this month if you're interested. If you're interested. Like, oh yeah, actually I am. Um, or you open a chat, can I send over a quick loom? Right, and so these are just really easy ways to just, I can say yes, there's no, there's no commitment on a time, there's no uh, call that I have to get on, I don't have to spend any money, nothing like that, right? Um, it's just easy for people to say yes to these and they then you can kind of, drag on the conversation or hold the conversation back and forth on email sms and google calendar invites people don't know who you are and so there's not and there's also not a lot of communication back and forth that's a little harder to do the communication back and forth so we want to get uh, off those platforms as quickly as possible and move over into a call so something you would say for email sms google calendar is are you free to test sometime this week can i send over my calendar link you can book here for free so on Google Calendar, I'll do, you know, this is my offer, trying to make it as compelling as possible. At the end, I'll say, look, if you, if, I'll literally pay you $3,000 if it doesn't work. Um, and that's a hook, no, which we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but, and then uh, if you want, you can just put a call here. Because on the Google Calendar, their only option is to click the email button to email me, and no one ever does that. And so I just say, hey, if you want, you can book a call with me here. So communication on Google Calendar advice is really tough. Um, on email, it's also really tough, because no one, no one, ha who, who do you know that just has a conversation back and forth on email? Like, hey, how's your day? It's really good. How's your... No one does that. Um, and then SMS people, you know, you would assume, you know, everybody has conversations back and forth every day on SMS. But the thing is, all you are to them is a string of numbers. All, all, you, all they see is a string of numbers. So they, they kind of assume that you're a scam. And so it's really hard to get somebody um, to convert on SMS. They're not going to just hold a conversation with a stranger. And so they can't see you. They don't know who you are. And so it's harder to do that. So what you want to do is you want to lead over to the call as quickly as possible. So I just say, you're free to chat sometime this week. So, um, I added CTAs and call to actions uh, to the offer framework. How do I do this? There we go. Um, 
So if you scroll down here, you have all those call to actions that I just added to here. Also some things that you can think about when creating your offer, which is basically what I just told you. Uh, adding curiosity, how I make $500 per day sending government letters. Like this is actually a friend of mine, Mark. He was saying that he's doing that. And I was like, oh, that's actually really interesting. Um, I don't think it's to the government, but it's just to some company and they have to, in order to be compliant, they have to receive these letters. You get $5 per letter. It's just, it was really weird. But he's making $500 per day just sending letters. I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. Um, I accidentally found a superfood that cures male, male pattern baldness. I'm not sure if I want to tell you what it is. That's curiosity. And I just made a whole bunch of random examples here. Um, and then again, not consensus. Uh, I can help you get 40 appointments, no cold outreach, no VAs, no paid ads. That's uh, an offer that Mitch Wiggins does. And doctor, I drank, I haven't drank water in over 20 years. Right? And you're like, to that, you're like, okay, well, doctor, <laughs> they recommend you drink eight glasses a day. And so if you have a doctor saying that they haven't drank water in 20 years, that's not consensus. That's a little weird. Uh, how I got 40 matches on Tinder in one day with my one line bio. Oh, that's actually really interesting. And th these are just ones I made up. Um, anyways, so I added the call to actions to those, uh, to this framework, this document here, also just, um, some, some, something to think about, right? Just the little points that I've made throughout this video in here. So you can, when you're creating your offers, you can just go through this, understand what to do and then create your offers. And, uh, yeah, cool. Also, okay, we're going to get into next up, um, hooks, right? Hooks is something that you can add to the end of your message or just use as a follow up. So, uh, earlier we did one where it was like, you literally don't have to, you don't have to pay anything up front, LOL. All right. That was the, the thing that was in yellow. And then another one, one that I'll do is I'll just say, if it doesn't work for you, I'll literally pay you $3,000 and I'll add that to the end of my email. No one's really taking me up on that. No one's really like asked me, look, how does that work? Um, and so it's, it's worked pretty well for me because people book a call and they're intrigued. Uh, but they really never really bring it up, bring it up on the call, which is funny. So hook, <laughs> hook, <laughs> hook swipe, <laughs> Mike Tyson. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So we're going to go over to the hook swipes and, um, can I call you tomorrow? Right. So imagine getting that as a follow-up message. So someone says, um, this one, that's really good. Actually. I just came up with that one before I <laughs> made this video. But uh, there's 50 of these. There's 50 intros, there's 50 hooks, and then 180 offers. And uh, so if someone said, you know, uh, I can get you the end result, blah, 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 and you're free to chat sometime this week, and then they don't respond after three hours, and then you just say, can I call you tomorrow? Or I'll just call you tomorrow, right? And then, like, then they feel like they have to respond, right? Uh, well, I mean, I'm not really interested. Or so, you know, at least they'll, you'll get a response. Or they'll say, yeah, actually, I'm interested. Uh, can we do, you know, 9 a.m. tomorrow? Or I can't do tomorrow. Actually, can we do Wednesday? And so I think those are really good. I bolded the ones that I really liked. A lot of these are really good, um, like, <laughs> but a lot of them are funny. And so sometimes I kind of bolded the ones that are um, a little less direct, a little less um, left field and a little less funny. And so these ones you can probably more, you can use a little more, but I would use some of the funny ones because you'll probably get better results. Um, so if you reply, I'll give you pizza rolls. If you, I'll literally send you a hundred dollars if you reply. Um, if you feel your waste, I feel, if you feel I wasted on your, oh God. <laughs> If you feel I wasted your time on the call, I'll send you $100 on Apple Pay. No questions asked. Why is talking so hard, dude? Oh. Um, do you know anyone else that's looking for end result? So if you said, hey, I can help you increase your shooting rate with your basketball. And then they don't respond. And say, do you know anybody else that really that wants this or needs this? Uh, what's the best way to reach you? Can I just follow up next week or tomorrow? Uh, you, are you from this city? Can I tell you a secret? Right. <laughs> um, I got to put food on the table and unfortunately this, uh, some way or, I don't you know. I saw you read this, LOL. Uh, reply with no, if you're not interested, LOL. Um, let's not make this weird. I got this one to one. Uh, take the blue pill. You don't respond and life goes back to normal. Take the red pill and I'll show you just how far company name goes or can go. Uh, cool. Cool. All right. Last thing. You want to create a family of offers and messages. So, create multiple different frameworks, multiple different messages, because um, you're going to pick and choose and see what works best for you. And you can also split test all of them just because there's a thing called controls, right? So you want to create a whole bunch of different offers, see the one that you think is going to work best and then start with that and start pitching that offer. And then that'll be your control. Control is this is what works for us and we know it works and it works consistently. And we're going to try variations of the control. So we're going to try, we're going to try this same thing, but with a different call to action, or we're going to try a completely separate thing. And we're going to see how it compares to the control. So does this call to action convert better? Do we get more replies if we're doing this call to action? 
Does it work better if we're saying it as if we're a girl rather than a guy? Does it work better if it's coming from a girl profile rather than a guy profile? Does it work better if I say a percentage rather than a, rather than um, a fixed number? You know, increase your increase your bed bug heat treatments by thirty percent rather than ten bed bug heat treatments. Like just changing the offer a little bit uh, at a time, or just little variations of the same thing, or just creating a whole different type, separate thing. And you have your control, and you have those other ones. And if those other ones, right? If you have another one. And using a percentage works better, or using a girl name versus a boy name. If that works better, then that becomes a new control, right? That becomes something that also works really well. And so we start using that one as our main one, and that becomes our control. Then we try to find other variations based on the main control. And so we want to create a variation, a family of these offers, because you're going to get so much better results if you create a family. I was watching, um, and I said this in another video, but Jay Abraham, he does a, uh, he'll do, do these live seminars, and a lot of the, the, one of the stories he tells a lot is, he had, uh, he was working with a furniture company, and Jay Abraham is like the, he is the highest paid consultant on the planet, I believe. He gets paid like $100,000 per day to, to come to your business and tell you what's wrong with it. And so what they did was he was working with this furniture company, and they were t testing 38 different ways of how to say hello to somebody as soon as they walk in the door. And so a lot of them didn't work, but they had one that worked 80% better. So they were got 80% better close rates by the one that they found, right? So they tested 38 of them, and one of them worked 80% better, and so they just started using that one, and that new one became the main thing that they said every time someone walked into the store. And so this new one wasn't, hey, how are you, or how's your day going, or what brought you into the store today? It was, what ad brought you into the store today, right? So if I said, hey, what ad brought you into the store today? They're gonna be like, oh, I saw the couch for $1.99, or I saw you know, the, the hot tub for $12.99. And you're like, oh, okay, let's look over that. And so you can't, you, you don't just walk into a furniture store. You came for a specific reason and purpose. And I want to see what the purpose is. Increased closing rate by 80%. So test a family of offers. Cool. Um, yeah, let's basically say this. Just split test, find out what works, works for you. So anyways, that is literally everything that I know about creating an offer. Hopefully this helps you out a ton. One other thing is you can literally just take from this and create your offer really quickly, right? So look. We'll do this. All right. Uh, boom. I'm just going to go over here. I tried to send you this message last week. We'll go to an offer. All right. I can, I can send you a thousand new podcast listeners in the next 30 days. You free to chat sometime next week. All right. Boom. There's your offer. That's it. That's literally your cold outreach message. And we made that in 10 seconds. And then we have a follow-up message, right? Which is, um, let's look at a hook. Can I call you tomorrow? Boom. Can I call tomorrow? And then the third outreach message. Third times a charm. I'm a real human. Human, LOL. Let me know if you're interested or I'll just keep following up. Right? How are you not going to respond to that? You know? Um, so that's literally like we just created an offer in 10 seconds or let's say a minute, right? It took us one minute to create an offer, which is basically instantaneous. It doesn't take us a lot of time. And all we got to do that is just, we just do that five times, right? And we have a family of offers. We're going to pick one that we think works best for us. We're going to go out with that, test all, all the different ones, see which one works best, make a control, and then try, keep trying, keep testing, keep testing, because people will steal your offer. People will abuse that offer. People will catch on to what you're doing and then they're going to start doing it and they're going to offer the same thing. And so a big thing with this and all of this is productive paranoia. So this, I, got, I don't know what book I got this from, but I believe it was um, Good to Great, something like that, Good to Great or Great by Choice, I don't, know, something, I don't know, I think a Jim Collins book. But there is a thing called productive paranoia, which is basically you want to be, you don't want to be set on, all right, we're the best company there is and no one competes with us and that's it. We're just going to, we're going to stay on top forever. There's a problem there because eventually someone's going to innovate. So eventually someone's going to do better than you. And so when someone starts doing better than you, they create a new offer that's better. And then you got stuck doing this one thing, right? And so the people that used the yellow pages and it worked consistently for them, they had an ad that worked for them. Call this number right now if you want, blah, 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 blah. Yellow pages died. And if they're stuck saying, look, this is what's working. We're going to stay here and uh, we're going to keep doing this. That didn't work for them, right? Because now they're dead or now their company is dead because all they did was yellow pages. And so if you had productive paranoia, you would have saw the internet age coming about and you would have caught onto the internet pretty early. 
and you would you probably you get so much farther ahead if you're paranoid, right? So if you're paranoid on what's the next big thing, right? Oh, I need to constantly be changing and updating and doing something. Like I already made this video, right? I already made this video, but I, I'm making a whole new version of the video because I know I wanted to make this video a lot better, and I know you're gonna get a lot better results through me making this video. And so I'm practicing productive paranoia by just trying to make my product as good as possible for your end result because somebody else is going to try to come up against me, right? I've already got people that they're stealing all my offers. They're stealing my outreach messages and uh, they're trying to be the new me, right? But I got to be productive. I got to be paranoid and try to find new ways of doing everything. I got to study different people. I got to study. So be paranoid because it's going to help you out in the long run because you're going to come up with new strategies, uh, new offers, new way of pitching things, new way of, new ways of positioning your business in a way that no one else is actually positioning it that way. And so do that. Hopefully it helps you guys out. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon.